Hi, it's Nina with Stitching with a Smile, and welcome back to my Hardanger Stitch Along. I'm so glad that uh, you're able to join me, and thank you so much for all your comments and uh, the enthusiasm that's, uh, that's out there for this, uh, and I really appreciate it. So last week we did the center motif, which was the uh, satin stitch star motif, and this week we're getting into the cloister blocks. So we've got quite a few cloister blocks to get through, so this week we're going to start with one section, and uh, each week we'll do uh, section by section. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoy. Our next step is to do these cloister blocks. Now that's what I've chosen to do. Again, if, you're, if you feel comfortable, do whatever you like. I'm, I'm just telling you how I like to, to work my piece. So, I've expanded this diagram again, uh, the same way it's written. with each square being two by two fabric threads. And what we will do, this is the area that we're going to stitch. And we need to count from what we had already stitched up to here to start our cloister blocks. So when I count the threads, or when I count the pattern, I'm starting from here, this spot, and going to that spot. And there are 26 threads in there. Now let's go back back to here. So if I count, this is the way the pattern is written, it's just I've expanded it so that uh, you can see better. Uh, that pattern is difficult to, to read. If I count f up, and remembering that each square is two fabric threads, so if I start here, I count two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, two, four, six. So there's twenty six fabric threads. Does that make sense? Each one of these is, is two fabric threads, so two, four, six, etc. I hope that makes sense for counting. So we are going to start here and move our way up and around this area. Let me move this out of the way. And if you remember from my tutorial, how to do cloister blocks, I'll run through it quickly here as well. Again, the dot is where we bring our thread up, and the arrow is where we bring our thread down. This is where we're starting, so we're going to go up. Oh, and I should say that I've redrawn this to show this as your fabric thread. That way it's easier to count. So this is the hole in the fabric. We come up, we go over one, over two threads, over three threads, over four threads, and sink our needle. Come back up here, over four, and we do that five times. One, two, three, four, five. Because in this case, these cloister blocks are covering four threads. So this way, it's over four threads. Each one of these is a thread. That's one, two, three, four. And even this way, there's a thread, two threads, three threads, four threads. So it's four over four. Even though there's five stitches, it's four over four. So this is how we're going to do our cloister blocks. We're going to come up and go down, up and down. It's a satin stitch. It's wrapping that bar. So we'll come up and down. Then we come back up here, change direction, and come down. This hole shares the thread for this and this. It has to share because if you start cutting and it's not sharing, it'll unravel. So we come up, down, 
up over four threads down, up, down, again. So up and down. Now this is a tricky part and I want you to pay attention. When you sink your thread here, do not come up here. That travels your thread behind the work. You want to come back up here. This is the same hole that you came up before to come down. You're going to come up that same hole again and go down here because you want to continue to wrap that, that uh, block, that section of threads. So up and down, up and down, up through the same hole, down, up and down, carrying on and carrying on. So each corner, each corner, you're sharing that hole with the previous set of cloister blocks. And that secures, that helps to secure when you do your cutting. So please keep that in mind. When you come up here and down, do not come up here. Come up here and down. Okay? And we'll carry on. Once again, I've got an away knot or a waist knot, three or four inches from where I'm going to start. And when I, let me find my diagram for, sorry about that, let me find diagram for the cloister blocks. So that is where I'm starting. I've counted all my threads. From this point, I've counted 26 threads up. And to be on the safe side, I also counted like that from the pattern. Now if I remember correctly it was 34 and 14. So 34 up and 14 over. And uh, I just do that to be on the safe side. Okay, so following our diagram for the cloister blocks, we will start stitching. So over four threads and I sink the needle and I come up above it. Down and up. This is the third stitch I'm taking. So there's three. I need five of these. This is the fourth one. The fourth one. So that's one, two, three, four. This will be the fifth one. Yet now we start the next set of cloister blocks. So we've done it this way and we do a 90 degrees and do it this way. And you sink your needle and come up four threads. It's one, two, three, four threads. So we've done this up and down, up and down, up and down, and we're bringing our needle up here and down, up and down. I'm going to turn my work. So there's our five satin stitches and I'm starting here. And this, this hole I share, so I come back down, so this is where I had gone down here, I'm also going to go down here to the same hole. I'm over one too far, there we go. So again, over four threads five satin stitches and okay one two three four this will be my fifth one I'm going to sink the needle here now well I don't have a scissor so here, I'm going to point with this. 
Now our next set go this way. We had gone that way, now we're going that way. So I have a couple of choices. I can come up here, the same hole, or I can come up here. And it's not that you have a couple of choices. You don't. You only have one choice. <laughs> Do not come up here. You want to come up here. So in the same hole, you're going to come up, turn your work, count over four, one, two, three, four, and you're off to the race. Okay, so if you look at this pattern, we started here and we worked our way up. That's one, two, three, four, five, six cloister blocks and we need to then work our way down for another six. So I've done one, two, three, four, five, six. I still have to sink my needle to finish that sixth one. And then I come up here and come up and down, up and down to do this area and then come back down. So let's do that quick. I'll sink my needle to finish my sixth block and instead of continuing up this way I'm going to, so instead of continuing up this way I'm going to start that way. Turn and go over four threads. Now you see how these are running that way? So these will run also run that way. and turn and carry on one, two, three, four. Okay, I'll be back to uh, show you how to finish and start a thread again. Just, uh, I know you probably know that already, but um, just to be on the safe side for, for any real new beginners. Okay, starting and ending threads for your cloister blocks. I'm finishing this cloister block. I'm going to sink my needle to the back. And then I'm going to pull my needle up further away and out of the way and just park it. Because what I will do, grab another needle, is on the back of my work, I will take my new thread and thread it behind these stitches. And then when I've stitched this part is when I'll take this thread and thread it behind the new stitches. And I will show you quickly how I do my threading. So, which one is it? This one, that's where the needle is. So it's this one I left off. This is the waist knot. And the waist knot I will thread behind the new stitches because as I come around here, this, this one I'll thread down here. Okay. So however many you feel comfortable with, go behind. I am going behind how many? One, two, three, four, five cloister blocks do six, do four, what you feel comfortable with. Now sometimes I do six, sometimes seven, depends. Okay, and I keep going here, there, and there. Okay, 
Now this thread would have gone back down in here. So that's where I'm going to sink my needle. And carry on stitching. Now one thing I would like to remind you is Please always uh, take your thread. Let me just do this stitch and I can show you, although it's not going to be that twisted. Let me lift up the camera. As you stitch, drop your needle and let it untwist. This one I have not stitched much, so it's not very twisted yet. But you may have to do that every couple of cluster blocks, depending on your thread. And that'll help uh, with the fraying, I believe. I'm not sure if it does or not. So just remember to do that. It'll also prevent any... Um, uh, it'll prevent or help to prevent knots from, from forming. And just to show you another tip, I have over here my little basket. There's a magnet here and a magnet here. These are magnetized on and I keep threaded needles ready to go, unthreaded needles as I use them and that way I can stitch a lot faster. And of course, orts in my, in my container. 